Here's the NASB. The New American Standard was an attempt to go word for word. The NASB, the New American Standard Version, was an attempt to go more word for word literal. They tried to go word, word, word in Hebrew, word in English, word in Hebrew, word in English, and they tried to do it. This is the way that comes out here. He who gathers in the summer, now by the way, do we like the gathers better than gathereth? Yeah, okay, so that's better, that's an improvement. He who gathers in the summer is a son who acts wisely. Now by the way, is this son who acts wisely, is that pretty long? Okay, so I just, okay, but he who sleeps, now this is an improvement, so he who sleeps in harvest is a son who acts shamefully. Is this obviously clear what this means? First of all, yes, we understand it. It makes perfectly clear. So this is good. Have they made some improvements here with the gathers, the sleeps, and have they made some improvements? Have they lengthened the sun who acts shamefully, though? Have they, have they kind of drawn that out? Now, I want to put the NIV up there and just so you can see the difference between the NIV. The NIV says, he who gathers crops. Now, by the way, where did the crops come from? Those NIV translators, do you realize those NIV translators, they added that word crops in there. The word crops is not in the Hebrew. They added to scripture. Is that bad news, man? They added to scripture. Do you see that? They added to scripture. Now, who did the NIV? You say, Hillary, didn't you tell me that Dr. Wilson did? He, did? he worked in Isaiah, not Proverbs. And by the way, I've told you about Dr. Wilson, right? You have, you know, thus saith the Lord, that's like good, gold, okay? The Wilson standard's right there, okay? <laughs> Dr. Wilson says it's good to go. I mean, you know what I'm saying. But anyways, what? Now, why did they put the word crops in there? No, no, they were, seriously, they added the word crops. He who gathers crops, why did they put that word crops in there? Pardon? Yeah, who said that? That was really good, yeah. In English, when we gather, he who gathers, we ask, gathers what? What was our next question? He who gathers in the summer, we'd say gathers what, right? Are you going to gather marbles? Are you going to gather sand? What are you going to gather and stuff? When it says crops, is that what it originally meant? Is that what the word katsir means, to gather crops? But actually, in an agricultural society, do you just say gathers and you parallel with uh, harvest? Is it obvious that what it means? But in our day, is gathers obvious? No, so they make it explicit by saying gathers crops. Is that helpful? Is that helpful to us? Because we don't live in agrarian society, and so the crops is helpful, okay? Now, by the way, is that what it originally meant? That's what it originally meant. Is the word crops there in Hebrew? No, it's not, but it's embedded in the word he who gathers. Of course, you gather crops, okay? So do you see what's going on there a little bit? He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Do you see this wise son? Is wise son different than a son who acts wisely? Is this really long and drawn out? Now I ask you, in a proverb, should a proverb be long and drawn out, or should a proverb be pithy and punchy? A stitch in time saves nine. Should a proverb be pitchy or pithy and punchy? Or should a proverb be this long sentence? Is a proverb supposed to be short, pithy, and bam, to the point? Is this a son who acts wisely? Is that drawn out or is that, or, or is a wise son, is that kind of like short and to the point? So question, does this fit Proverbs, the, the idea of the proverbial genre, does this, or the literary form, does this fit it more punchy? A disgraceful son rather than a son who acts shamefully. You see what I'm saying? So question, do I like this book translation better than this one? I personally like it. This one has some punch to it. Short, like Proverbs, adds the crops here to help you, just in a frame of the agrarian stuff. And then disgraceful son, again, punching, opposing the wise son and the disgraceful son, sleeps during harvest. By the way, is this talking about college? Yes. Okay, now, let's go to a different one. This is called the New Living Translation. And in the book of Proverbs and the New Living Translation, there's all sorts of problems. So let's look at some of them. Um, a wise youth, now as soon as you see that, has something changed. A wise youth, 
All the other ones said a wise what? Son. Does everybody see that? Had they, had they neutered the gender and put youth instead of son so that it would not be exclusively gender son? Was it done for that reason? And the answer is yes, it was done for exactly that reason. Did somebody write pages telling them that that was not the right way to do it? Yes. Was that individual's suggestions ignored? Yes. When you lose, what do you do? You complain, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so anyways. Uh, no, really, it really still bothers me. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Doesn't that sound? Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Does that sound very different than listen, my child, to your father's instruction? Yeah, yeah. How old is the son? This guy's trying to get his son not to, uh, how do you guys use shack up, a hook up with this woman? And, and a question, is he a child? No, I don't know what you guys, whatever you call it. But anyways, uh, you know what I'm saying? Is this a father warning his son, telling him not to have whatever? Is this kid a child? No, obviously. He's okay. And so what I'm saying is to use the word child, why did they use the word child instead of son? Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Listen, to my child. Do you see the difference in meaning there? I think anybody can see the difference there. There. Anyways, question. When the editor over you does something, do you got to bite your tongue and just say, hey, that's it. You know what I'm saying? You, you got you to chill out sometimes, okay? I'm still mad about it. <laughs> I think it's wrong. But anyways, and you know what I'm saying? And so, but do I have respect for the people that I translated with and, and the editor over me? Uh, I won't even tell you his name, but anyways, do, do, do I respect the guy? Yes, immensely, and I enjoy the person. And uh, he's, he does me to wit and uh, gets me to think, and I just uh, appreciate him so much, but I just disagreed on these points, okay? So a youth, a youth who sleeps away the hour of opportunity. Well, let, well, wait, let's finish this. A wise youth works hard all summer. Where's the harvest crops? Is the harvest crops gone? The harvest crops is gone. Why did they take it away from the harvest crops? It says works hard. Is that the real point of the proverb? Is the proverb that you guys need to gather crops or is the proverb that you guys need to work hard? It's, is this telling you the meaning is this telling you the meaning without the image of the harvesting of crops? Yes. Is that good or bad? What happened to the metaphor of the crops and stuff? Is that beautiful, the metaphor of the harvesting crops? Yes, it is. Okay, I like that. I don't like it when they take my metaphors away. I like, no, the metaphors are rich. Metaphors are rich. But here, question, does this help you understand the point of the proverb? The answer is, yeah. This puts it right out in your face. And, and I like I like subtleties and I like the richness of the, of the metaphors. And so this bothers me a little bit too, but I, I can see the point. You, you don't put the metaphors in, you put the meaning of the metaphor. And by the way, is that more helpful for people that read the Bible? Are they sure to get the right point then? And so what happens is you work with the point. Now, a youth who sleeps away the hour of opportunity, what's the hour of opportunity? Was that it, that you need to harvest when the fruit is ripe? If you harvest two months after the fruit is ripe, it's no good. So th is this again giving us the point of the proverb without using the harvest imagery? So this is telling us the meaning, and so it's more meaning to meaning. Yes, ma'am. Actually, once, I think that once you take away the metaphor um, with the crops, it raises an interesting question. It's like, why, why is he working hard in the summer? What's wrong with the winter? Why is he working hard in the summer? Okay, yeah. It doesn't mention the crops. It's like. Right, so why is he working hard all summer and things? That raises a whole other environment. But by the way, do most college students, do you work what? In the summer or in the winter? Well, no, you work in the summer, right? You guys do summer jobs now? Yeah, I assume that you work in summer. So that, that, that's maybe why it still fits that people work still in the summer and stuff. But notice, bring shame, again, not the sun and stuff. Is, this, is the meaning of the proverb really clear in this one? Is the meaning of the proverb really clear in this one without the metaphor and stuff? Yeah. Now, this one. Uh, once upon a time, there was a guy named Eugene Peterson, teaches up in Canada. You know how the Canadians are. So he is, he is a... How should I say it? He is a godly, godly man that I would look up to. I don't know him personally. I look up to him from the work that he's done, and I've read some of his work. He's a godly, godly man and stuff. Is he extremely creative? Now, what's the problem with creativity? 
I'll tell you, because I tend to be creative myself at points and stuff, it's hard when you're creative. To, there's a fine line between creativity. Now, I'm not talking about him. Eugene Peterson, I'm talking about. OK, there's a fine line between creativity and weirdness, OK? And I've never been able to find the line, OK? But anyways, he, he on the other hand, is a good scholar, top flight scholar, and a, a creative individual. And he comes up with stuff that when you read it, you say, I read it, and I say, man, I wish I would have translated it like that. This guy is a, a genius, OK? And he, he captured. Now, what I'm saying is Eugene Peterson from, um, he's up at Region in Vancouver in Canada. He captures something of the prophetic or the proverbial moment that I have not been able to capture. And so I look with admiration. Now, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. But this guy captures, check this out. This is his translation. Same verse. Make hay while the sun shines. No, is that it? Has he got it? Do we say make hay while the sun shines? He's got that, you know, work hard during the summer. He's, he's got it. Make hay while the sun shines. That's smart. Going fishing during the harvest, that's stupid. Now, now if, I had to, if I had to change a word, it would probably be this one. Stupid, is that real strong? Yeah. By the way, is the proverb real strong? Yeah, but anyways, so he actually, I, I think I toned this word down just a shade. But, but is, is, is there genius here? Does this capture the proverb? Do you, do you see this? Make hay while the sun shines, that's smart. Go fishing during the harvest, that's stupid. Okay. okay. This is the Message Bible. It's called The Message. It's done by Eugene Peterson. Now, I've got to admit, while I respect Peterson's genius and stuff, the problem with one person translating is, is it possible that you'll have verse that's flat, 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 genius, flat, 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 genius? You know what I'm saying? Can a person be genius every verse? Does he do this with every verse? No, I picked this out, OK? But, but what I'm saying is he will have these verses that you just sit there and just makes you smile. It just you say, man, he's got it. I mean. Now, by the way, is this word for word? No, is this dynamic equivalence, meaning for meaning? Has he got the meaning for meaning thing? Now, by the way, which one of these translations are you going to use? Is it possible when I'm wanting to smile that I'll use the message and it'll make me think about this thing in a different way than I ever thought about it before, and so I use this. Is it possible to use the NIT or NLT? Yeah. Is it possible to use the NIV? Is it possible you can use different translations at different, when you're in different moods, when you're doing different things? If you're a, a pastor trying to prepare for a sermon, are you going to use something wild and wacky like that, or are you going to use a more word-for-word -word literal? Actually, if you're a pastor doing a thing, would you probably do both? Yeah. Get this one. Would the people in your church find you know, resonance with this last one? Yeah, so you know it depends what you're trying to do, and uh, so I, and, and of course, what you really should do is, of course, read the original Hebrew, and then it's all, you know, okay. So 